All right, everybody. So I've been trying iPadOS 15 for about a week now. And I want to talk to you about something that most tech YouTubers have just glossed over, but it happened to be the most exciting thing that happened at WWDC as far as I'm concerned. Let's talk about shortcuts. There's so many updates, so many things have improved. I'm so excited. Let's talk about them. But before I move forward, yes, we'd still have the ask before running toggle. So if you were hoping that's fixed, no, that's not fixed yet. And let's get excited for the things that have come with iOS 15. Let's take a look at the UI first. On the surface level, there's not much that has changed. You still have the three tabs at the bottom to organize shortcuts, automations, and gallery. Navigation still lives on the left side of your iPad. But as soon as you start digging deeper, you'll find out there's so much that has changed. All the actions appear to be smaller in size, making it much easier to look at and understand for a much longer shortcut. So this is super nice for advanced users. Speaking of longer shortcuts, that has also been taken care of by having collapsible actions. So you have the ability to collapse actions that contain multiple actions within them. If condition actions or menu item actions can be collapsed into a single action. So it's much easier to scroll through something that has hundreds and hundreds of actions. Other than that, on the UI side, they have updated the variable pop-up that used to show up on the bottom half of the screen. Now it's going to be a pop-up that shows up and you can change the name of the variable right there. Much simpler for somebody who's not familiar with how shortcuts work. As far as organization of actions go, there's one huge difference that all your third-party application actions will live in a separate tab now called applications. Having the apps category moved out of this navigation pane has now added space for having a category for all your actions. I don't know who's looking through a thousand actions just stored in one giant list, but it's here if you wanted it. You now have suggested actions. They haven't proven to be very useful for me, but sometimes it will show you the if action, which is super hard to find when you're looking for it because of all the actions that have IF in their names. It's kind of useful, but if you're not going to use it, it's not going to hurt you in any way. You still have the ability to run two instances of shortcuts side by side, which is amazing, which has been there since iPadOS 14. But what is new here is now you can drag actions from one shortcut to another shortcut. And this is a total game changer, especially if you want to edit an existing shortcut and try something new because you can now just copy paste stuff around. Just loving this entire feature update. Well, that's all about the UI. One bad thing that I want to point out about the shortcuts update is something that I had to suffer from. I don't know if you will suffer from it as well, but all my permissions were reset as a part of the update. I was expecting all the data will be preserved, but that was not the case. All the permissions were reset and now I have to allow always on all my shortcuts. Speaking of permissions, it's not all that bad because now you don't need to have untrusted shortcuts toggle enabled. So every time you share a shortcut, you don't have to send a tutorial to enable untrusted shortcuts anymore. This is just amazing. Like, yeah, is Apple opening shit up? Is that what's happening? Let's talk about actions. We're going to go through the ones that I've been able to find. But if you know any that I haven't been able to find after this video, please leave them in the comment section below. The first one that I want to talk about is the open app action. It's something that everybody uses. It's the one that TikTok made famous. This one now accepts magic variable. Earlier on iOS 14, you would have to manually select the application you want to open, but now you can pass that as a variable. Other than that, it also allows you to open applications in slide overview. This is amazing for any multi-application workflows that you want to set up. Speaking of multiple applications, let's talk about this amazing action called split screen applications. This basically allows allows you to open two applications side by side. And when you expand the action, it gives you the option to choose how much space one application should take on your screen. Again, just like the open app action, this allows you to send applications as a magic variable. You don't have to actively select the application. I know shortcuts is amazing and Apple is a very good software company, but this time they stole something from Toolbox Pro, I guess is developed by one single person who learned coding basically to develop this application. So Apple stole his action called extract text from images. This is just a simple action that takes an image, recognizes the text in that image and puts it onto a variable that you can pass to the next action or you can also save it onto the clipboard. Let's talk about actions for file management. First of all, this time shortcuts is not limited to a shortcuts folder only. You have ability to expand to the entire iPad file system. With this update, you get actions for creating a folder, deleting a folder, getting contents of a folder, you can also filter files. You can get a single file from your storage or you can get a single file from your Dropbox. 
You can move files in addition to copying them and renaming them as well. This update is huge for file management. If you were going to automate that workflow, I'm hoping this will get better over time. There are a couple of boring ones as well. You got focus modes on iOS 15. So you get all the focus mode enabled disable actions and you get automations based on that. I mean, it's just do not disturb and you have multiple profiles. Another update that I want to mention is that the speak action now lets you select the Siri voice that you want to use. But this is beta one and none of those work. So I'm hoping maybe in the future, you should be able to select what Siri voice you want to use when you use the speak action. Coming to the automation side of the things, I've already given you the bad news that you, st you still have to disable the ask before running toggle. You get a few more triggers though. You get triggers based on the focus modes and you get a trigger for sound recognition. Sound recognition is something that I think is new in iOS 15. I'm not sure about that. Your phone's gonna listen to the sounds all the time and you can select what sounds you should react to. I want to say that this shortcut update is big. If you want more shortcut videos, I will leave them all over the place because I make a lot of shortcut videos and I know a lot of people care about them. 